We're going to have our second presentation from Martin Rafer. Um, his presentation outlines a proposal to transform IDs, current user interface, turn it around OSM's data model into an adaptive user experience that is better tailored towards the needs of individual members and outlines an approach of how we can get there as a community. So, welcome, Martin. So, hello, everyone. I'm here today to spark a discussion about how the future of editing in OpenStreetMap uh, could look like. And I'm talking specifically about the ID editor because I'm personally the current maintainer of it, and I'm also getting paid by the OSM Foundation for this work. Now, as a quick overview, since more than 10 years, ID is the default editor on OpenStreetMap that edits, uh, opens up when you click on the edit button, and it is therefore used by lots of new mappers. And because of that, it, one of the goals of ID itself is to become a simple way and a welcoming way to contribute to OpenStreetMap. And therefore, it should provide a good mapping experience also for first-time contributors who don't know yet the whole complexity of yeah, OpenStreetMap. And yeah, therefore, it also has to abstract away some of the, these complexities for example, by providing good presets for the tagging schema from OpenStreetMap. Now, there's also, there has also always been a very active development community around OpenStreetMap, specifically also the ideator. And in the past, it was mostly the case that there was one or more maintainers of it and lots of volunteers contributing casually. And now we are slowly transforming the whole project to become a little bit more structured. So currently you can also become a co-maintainer of the presets repository and help out more. If you want to help out more regularly, you can also become uh, uh, yeah, become a helper on, on GitHub to help out with answering tickets and, and stuff like that. And we also had regularly got some external contributions by, by students, for example, one example would be the Google Summer of Code project, which uh, yeah, well, typically also gives, brings new people into the project. And as I said, uh, contributions to the, pro to the code and to ID itself, not just development code, uh, are always very welcome. So now to the main core of this talk. So um, I would argue that OpenStreetMap is has probably started out as a project mostly focused around roads, but it's not that anymore. It's much more than that. It's also like roads and buildings, but it's also not just roads and buildings. It's roads and buildings and points of interest. And it's even more than that. And when you think about 10 years ago when ID was like still new, uh, then OpenStreetMap looked, I would say, considerably different from like just the amount of data that was present back then. And also, additionally, the, the variety of the stuff that gets mapped has increased considerably since then. And yeah. And so this creates a little bit of friction. On one hand, it creates a, a barrier of entry for new people joining the OpenStreetMap project as a mapper. So, um, as there is now more data and more richness of data, it gets more and more complicated to become a new member of it. It uh, might be a little bit, how to say, uh, overwhelming to new members. And so one job the editors have to provide is to better abstract away these complexities that we have. Um, I put here some examples. Um, yeah, access tagging is something that people intuitively know about from real world experience, but it is hard to do properly in, in, in the OSM tagging schema. And yeah, one other thing would be opening hours. And sometimes OpenStreetMap tagging is also very specific. It's uh, yeah, schemas, ideas that people thought about you know, on the OSM wiki and documented it there, but it's very specific to OpenStreetMap. Or, it could also be the case that it is specific to a specific region. So mapping one thing in, I don't know, 
France might be quite different from how you map the same thing in, let's say, Australia or South Africa or Kenya. And yeah, this is all things that the editors have to kind of uh, accommodate. And now there might also be accessibility requirements by, by especially, specifically beginners, um, not only. But yeah, uh, in addition to the examples that, that are listed on the slide, it might also be relevant for some people to have an offline mode when your internet connection is not that great. <laughs> yeah, and maybe last but not least, contributing to ID itself is, has not been super easy in the past. That's definitely something we can still work on. And next, a second challenge we currently face is as OpenSaver itself has evolved, it's less now about mapping new features for the first time because in lots of regions, the map is not empty anymore. It's not, not a clean playground anymore. So we need more and more tools to refine existing data. And also we, have, we need more and more tools to keep the map up to date. And yeah, one of the things of that is we need ways to highlight potentially outdated data. And yeah, I would say maybe last comment here. Um, it also becomes more important <laughs> as the data becomes richer to have good documentation ab about how certain things from reality have to be, or can be mapped in OpenStreetMap. Now, in the remaining part of this talk, I wanted to show some possible approaches how we can tackle these challenges. And take, please take all of these with a grain of salt. These are just some possibilities, some, yeah, uh, examples, and more like meant as a starting ground for discussions. And not at all something that has been started to, to be worked on. So a first idea would be to use more and more vis visualizations or illustrations of, of tags. This uh, can alleviate the problem of language barrier, for example, because typically like icons or pictures uh, yeah, um, are much more understandable, especially specifically when you combine them with uh, your well-written documentation. So one example I have in mind here is instead of this very long list of access tags that you can use in OpenStreetMap, why not use something like everyday signposting that everyone already knows about? Yeah, another thing is that for, for complex tags, there could be spe specialized UI components that abstract away the difficulty or the, the intricacies of these tags, for example, for opening hours. And yeah, for some tags, there could also be a bit more visual support uh, for choosing concrete values. Let's say you want to, to, to map the surface of a, a road, then the UI could give you some examples of how different surface tags would look like in reality. Now, here's an example of how this could look like in ID itself. This is a relatively simple residential road. It has a max speed tag set, a max weight tag set, and also one access restriction, particularly here that no heavy good vehicles are allowed. And how currently ID displays this is you have this field for the max weight tag, which is kind of okay, but for example, this uh, Access restriction is not even displayed uh, in the list here. It seems like there is no access restriction present, but that's just because this UI component currently does not support all the possible values. If it would support all values, then this list would be like two pages long at least. So the idea here would be, why couldn't it look like this? Uh, just print icons that represent these restrictions in reality and yeah, give the user also some way to manipulate them, to edit them. So I would say that for, for speci specifically for beginners, this would be much more intuitive to know uh, what these tags actually mean. 
Okay, let's go to the topic of map maintenance. Some people also call this map gardening, which I really like. So the question is, how can we effectively or yeah, in a good way make sure that the map is up, kept up to date? And one aspect for that is we need to find out which data is maybe out of date. And some people proposed to use a specific tag for that, the check date attribute, where you would say, on this particular date, I checked that this map feature has been yeah, uh, still present and mapped correctly. And uh, there's already some support in Hadi for that, but it's not super intuitive and not super prominently displayed. And so it would be nice to have an easy way to just mark a feature as checked, as validated. And another aspect for map maintenance would be uh, to more easily support changing feature life cycles. Let's say you have a map road that was still under construction, and sometime or later you come around and want to make it a, change it to a, a street that is in operation. And this should be not much more than one click, I would say. Or, yeah, specific, also the other way around. And let's say a shop closed, then uh, it should be just one click to mark it as uh, closed. Because, okay, you could technically just delete it, but that also has its problems because some other mappers might come around and just remap it, uh, maybe based on old street level imagery. So leaving it there and marking it as closed is maybe a better approach. And for map maintenance, it could also make sense to integrate more and more external data validation tools to help with this job. Okay, there's a small example of how this um, check date idea could look like. Currently, it looks like this. You have a simple bench with some attributes, and at the bottom of this list of tags, you see that someone checked this bench uh, like a year ago. It's a little bit hidden, but that's okay. But the idea is, why couldn't, why can we not just move this attribute to the very top of the mm, yeah, uh, feature, map feature? And here, since it has been checked recently, uh, it would get this stamp of approval. Uh, and if you would go over with your mouse, it would give you an easy, uh, easy way to update this date. Uh, yeah. And this can also go in more detail. You can use this check date attribute also to mark specific attributes of a uh, feature that has been, have been checked specifically. So let's say here you have a, a, a track road where someone validated that the track type is actually correctly mapped. And, but for the surface tag, it's still missing. So this would be an idea to, to implement. Now, let's go to a different uh, idea. Um, I would say that mapping should be a fun task, an enjoyable task, and specifically, it should not be something that's tedious. And what I hear quite often is that some common mapping tasks are a little bit more tedious in ID to do than compared to, yeah, let's say, other editors. And one way, one example is here very prominent that if you want to build, uh, map many buildings of, let's say, a town or a city, then this can get quite repetitive. And for these repetitive tasks, efficiency is key, I would say. And so it would definitely make sense to integrate a kind of building mapping mode or whatever you would call it, um, similar to how other editors have it. Now, there's also another aspect of it when you have an area that's already quite mapped quite um, with good coverage, but let's say low precision, then editing these existing geometries can be more tedious than, for example, just deleting everything and drawing it from scratch again. As one example would be if you have a large uh, farmland area and want to efficiently cut out small areas that are actually forests or 
uh, water areas. And so it would make sense to integrate more tools to make these common tasks more, more fun and enjoyable. Now, one last but relatively big idea would be to introduce something that I currently call adaptive mapping workflows into the editor. And the goal for these would be to counteract the increasing amount and variety and also complexity of the data that is mapped. And so it would change how things are mapped and more like the, the, the workflow of how you map things with the goal to provide focus on a particular mapping task. And you could call out and say, provide focus to a particular data layer of OpenStreetMap. So let's say if you're currently mapping roads or let's say sidewalks or bicycle paths, that all the surroundings that are around it, let's say the, all the shops and all the buildings are still relevant, but more like relevant as uh, an environment you're in. You're typically not editing them all so in the same, same session. So reducing this visual noise could make uh, some mapping tasks more, maybe not, not easier per se, but more, more streamlined and yeah, less, less, less hard to do, uh, specifically for beginners. And it would guide mappers better through the landscape of, of features that you have. So here's an example. Let's say you're interested in mapping a road. All the surrounding areas, uh, surrounding features, are maybe not important, can even be distracting, or in the worst case, can cause errors when you accidentally snap, let's say, a road to a boundary line. Boundary, um, yeah, uh, yeah, boundary line, which you would actually want to avoid. So the solution could be to just, if you have a road selected, to just gray out the surroundings that are unrelated to this particular type of feature that you have selected. And yeah, for that short time, not allow any interactions with these other features. And yeah, another example would be for a, a complex feature. Here I used the school example, but the bus stop would also be perfectly fine. Um, it's not so, so well discoverable for new mappers uh, how, you would, how you should map them, right, in the full complexity. So in the past, it would be very well, well yeah, let's say good, good enough to just put a point in the middle of the school and say, this is the school and this, it has this name and uh, maybe a few more attributes. But nowadays, like to do, you might want to map the school uh, in its full area and also put some, some features inside it to get yeah, the full coverage of it. And the editor could and should probably guide new mappers uh, in this process to let them know, OK, these features are probably present inside the school area and you might map, uh, want to map them as well. Now, last but not least, some more wild ideas. ID could have more ways to customize it to specific needs for different mappers and also maybe different regions. And it could also be cool to add more communications between mappers into the editor. Um, so, so let's say uh, currently you have this notes feature where mappers can interact with each other, but it's more meant like to report problems with the data. It has a little bit of this negative spin on it. And I would envision that, that there could be some benefit from having like casual talks, casual uh, chats between mappers inside the editing session. And like going, going to the extreme, it might even be possible to let people to collaboratively edit in a specific area. This might make sense when you uh, are in a 
let's say, very densely mapped urban area, where not every mapper knows every, uh, every detail of OpenStreetMap. So maybe we can join forces and be more efficient with that. Now, to conclude this talk, I repeat, it's still a very early stage. There are still lots to figure out, and any contribution is very, very welcome. There will be a Birds of a Fellow session later this afternoon at 5.30 about this topic, where you can just chat about it if you are interested. But you can also join the regular monthly community chats about the idea editor. And in general, any help with designing new features, planning new features, and also developing new features is uh, very, very welcome. That's it. Any questions? Okay. Thank you so much. Question number one says, great to see the evolution of ID. It seems Street Complete has solved many of the discussed issues. Is there any exchange of utilizing features from Street Complete for ID or the other way around? Yeah, uh, quite a few of these ideas uh, have been stolen from Street Complete, that's true. And there is already some collaboration, I would say, between the two projects, uh, specifically in <laughs> that the, the technical presets are shared between ID and Street Complete and other tools. And yeah, I would say there's still room for, for even more, yeah. Second question says, um, with increased focus on facilitating refinement and maintenance of existing data, how will ID maintain usability for regions that are still undermapped? Mm -hmm. I would say that's still to be figured out. Um, I, I would say it's important to keep in mind that like the simple approaches for the regions that are yet to be mapped should still be present in the editor, right? You wouldn't take away the possibility to map a school just as a point or a simple polygon. So, yeah, I think that should be a way to approach it. Um, besides lifecycle prefixes, could ID transfer features to open historical map when OSM no longer wants them? Sorry, what was the question? Historical map. Ooh. Interesting idea. Uh, the idea would be to, to add a feature to transfer features from OpenStreetMap when they are not present anymore to Open Historical Map. I mean, why not? It should also be then kind of be displayed. Uh, th there should be a, like a two-way communication, maybe. Yeah, could be could be a cool idea. I haven't, I haven't thought about it. This one is a bit more answer from the uh, street complete side to the first question. And yes, uh, there is collaboration actually in uh, both directions, uh, f especially in this tagging schema and also some, uh, some ideas went also in uh, other direction and also would be uh, happy to uh, help help with uh, help with it. Actually, you, we discussed it a bit on this uh, ID community chat together. Hi. Hey. I wanted to to ask if ID is going to become more domain specific or having some more functions for domain specific questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it really better uh, or do we have enough with, for example, a street complete every door, other tools that are more specific and then have an ID for a more general approach? Are we trying to uh, make everyone ha happy somehow and trying to fit everyone's need while it's at some point maybe impossible to fit everyone's needs and it should focus on something? Yeah, it's a difficult question. It's very hard to tell. <laughs> I would say that it's important that different tools are not working against each other. So if one tool supports one approach, let's say this check date, for example, very well, then I would see that there is really a benefit from supporting this also in ID. When going towards more 
domain specific features, there might be more caution advice, yes. But we also have to try it out, right? Otherwise, we cannot know. OK, last question. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, at set of the map, we were promised getting the building a two in ID. Any chances that this feature would go live soon? The building tool, yeah. So how to answer this very well. So, so the point is, I only have limited time, and like the, already the maintenance job, like not the development, more like the coordination of everything around ID already takes quite a bit of time. So th there is also a need for external contributions in terms of yeah, developing actually actual features. And sometimes it, it could be faster if more people would get involved. Yeah, get involved. Thank you so much, Martin. A round Thank of applause you. for him.